All right, welcome to another episode of the Jazz Piano School Podcast. I'm your host as always, Brendan Lone. Thank you so much for being here. This is gonna be episode number 161. Now, one of our educators, Sterling Koza, is continuing a two-part series. So if you haven't checked out the first part, episode 160, go back and do so. This time it's gonna be on practicing time. Uh, arguably one of the most important topics in jazz and in music, right? Now, there needs to be some sort of checks and balances system when you're practicing time. How do you do it? You could be rushing, you could be dragging, right? You need some way to practice time. That way when you go to play, your time is actually good, right? So in this episode, Sterling has a lot of amazing ideas and a lot of great content in this episode to help you practice time, all right? So that being said, let's dive right into this episode. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to another podcast for jazzpanelschool.com. This is Sterling Koza. So today we've got the second installment of How to Practice Like a Pro. The topic today, don't just play. What do we mean by that? Well, it's easy to get into the practice room and say, hey, I'm gonna work on this tune today, or I'm gonna work on playing blues. And you play a blues for an hour, and maybe you have some fun, and you find some new things, but at the end of the day, you played a blues for an hour. And uh, how much is that gonna get you? Well, if you do that every day, it might get you somewhere, but here we're talking about how to optimize our practice time, how to get the most out of our practice time. What if you only have 20 minutes? How can you get the most out of that time? Well, today we're talking about don't just play. Now, if I'm going to play a blues, I wanna have a specific goal in mind. What's my goal? Is it to play through multiple keys? Am I working on my rhythm? Am I working on my time feel? Am I working on my harmonic vocabulary? These are all different things that we can think about within the framework of just one simple thing as a blues. But in order to maximize our practice time, we want to be able to focus on a specific thing. So that thing that you focus on, the, the topic of your focus for that practice session is up to you. And what you choose to practice will ultimately determine who you are as a player and what you sound like based on what you want to work on. And we'll go through a few suggestions of things that you could work on. Um, we're going to use a blues for today. So if I have a blues like Straight No Chaser, the Monk tune, we'll go ahead and play it. For those of you that aren't familiar, it goes like this. the head more or less minus a few little missed notes but so if I'm working on this blues already this tune gives me a lot to think about uh, now if I'm playing a blues if I were just playing I might sit down and go You know, I can play the changes, uh, I've spent a good amount of time just playing through the changes of a blues, finding some different ways to go through it, but after a while it gets old. I mean, I don't know if anyone else has ever felt I'm playing the same blues over and over again. Um, well here's a way to get out of that, and we're talking about don't just play, don't just sit down and play a blues. What blues are you going to play? What head are you going to play? What are you going to do with the head? How are you going to accompany yourself? Those are all things that you can think about and focus on in your practice to give you that much more of an effective uh, and uh, accurate practice routine. So if I were to sit down and play the blues straight note chaser, if I'm working on my improvising, I might play the head and say, okay, when I'm improvising here, I want to use some aspects of the melody in my improvising. Now let's take a look at this melody. What are some of the aspects of this melody that stand out to you? To me, for this one, the big thing is the chromaticism. Right? You got a lot of 
chromatic sidestepping going on. And then at the end, at the very end, you've got a whole chromatic scale. Going from C to B flat. Right? So, if I were to work on my improvising on this tune, playing a blues, I might say, hey, let's see how much chromaticism I can use in this solo. So here's what that might look like for me. Uh, I'll play the last part of the head. As you can see, that was a little different from what I came in earlier, the solo I played. I may have been using some similar left hand shapes, but the solo itself was very different because I had a specific goal in mind. And you'll find that when you practice with these specific goals in mind, it starts to make its way into your playing where you go to take a solo and you, you go, oh hey, when I, when I take this solo, maybe I can play with this chromaticism from the melody, or maybe I can play this solo using only triplets or something. And these are ways that you can get the most out of your practicing so that when you go to perform or play with people, um, these aspects start to make their way into your playing. So what are some other options we can have for things to focus on in our practice? Well, the list is kind of endless, but if we're just talking about a blues, uh, if we're talking about straight note chaser still, first we talked about chromaticism. Um, another big part of this tune that I find inspiration in is the, uh, the rhythmic nature. Thelonious Monk, the author of this blues, uh, the composer, was a big proponent of alternative and interesting rhythms. Uh, so check out the rhythm of this tune. interpret that rhythm as sort of angular and a little offbeat. So uh, what if I take a solo that's sort of angular and offbeat? Let's try that. my version of a solo that is sort of angular and offbeat in uh, a monkish sort of style. So it can be really fun to just give yourself different challenges and tasks um, to kind of shake things up and change up your improvising. So um, see if you can come up with your own ideas. Take maybe a tune you're working on, it doesn't have to be a blues. Take a tune that you like um, and find some different aspects of the tune that pique your interest and challenge yourself in different ways uh, that maybe you're not used to playing. Maybe play a, a tune with only, uh, only minor chords or only major seventh chords or something, or only fourths. It's really great to give yourself parameters. Uh, someone once told me uh, that the greatest freedom comes within boundaries, which is uh, something to think about. It might be a little counterintuitive at first, but it begins to make sense when you start talking about these different ways that you can uh, find freedom within these constraints of, of these different focuses in your practice. So, 
I hope you found this helpful um, and enjoyed some of the stuff we talked about today. And uh, I can't wait to hear what you come up with. All right. See you next time. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode from Sterling Coza and Jazz Piano School. If you liked the episode or you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below in the uh, comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our video on YouTube. We release a new podcast every single Wednesday. We release a new Lick of the Week every single Monday on our YouTube channel. So please go check us out at jazzpianoschool.com. We have so much more free information, free education for you. Have a fantastic day, and as always, happy practicing.